Welcome back. We are up to episode 8 and how to program in C++. In this episode, enums. An enum is some kind of enumeration. So let's update this thing as usual. Enums. And enums are generally used as some kind of switch or state control or something along those lines. Because what they are is they are a variable and we'll go ahead and make one up here at the top. We'll do that up here above our while loop that way it doesn't instantiate a bunch of different times. And how you do these is you start with the word enum which is a keyword. Then you give your enum structure a name like uh, we'll just call it choice. I tend to do these in all caps. Some people don't but it doesn't matter. This names a a new type of variable that you can instantiate and then you do the squiggly brackets and you give the different values your enum could be so in our in our choice here we only want a 1 through 4 but usually when people make enums they make an invalid case too so we'll do that we'll make an invalid case and we'll make a well we'll call it add subtract, multiply, divide. And this can make it a little more clear when you're going through your logic because you can see exactly what your case is called given what you've named it. These don't have to be caps. I just like to do them in all caps. And they follow the standard names of a variable where you can start them with an underscore if you want. You can use lowercase, you can put numbers in them, et cetera, et cetera. And then you put one of these semicolons at the end and now you have this in your scope so you can use it say we want to so if we want to use it we'll instantiate one of them okay let's make a new choice enum and we'll just call it in lowercase choice or maybe I'll put an underscore in front of it to make sure it doesn't overlap with any other variable called choice but that's up to you so now we've got this we can use and now how this works is this first one is a zero, the second one is a one, and it actually looks like it tells you if you hover over them, and so on. However, you can start it at different numbers if you want, like maybe we want this one to be 12. Now it's 12, and the next one increments as you go on, and it automatically does that. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll just, we'll just leave it the default of starting a zero. So you can assign these based on their integer value. You can say, Okay, well, let's make our choice equal to 1, and that will make it equal to add. Or you can also say choice equals add. Sometimes you have to scope it and say, we're talking about this enums value of add. So you'll see this too. But at starting off, maybe we just want it to be invalid. And then we jump into our loop. And instead of using this integer of choice, we're going to use this. So we'll go ahead and put this down here. And I will also point out another way of instantiating these if you're declaring it at the same place. You may have seen this before. You can do it that way, and that instantiates it right after declaring it. But if you're getting it from another header or something, you're going to have to do the variable name and then or the variable type in the name. This works too. Just wanted to show you that. So as we go into our loop, we set, at first we set our choice to invalid, and then we're going to switch on choice. And of course, these have all been renamed. Yeah, because one is equal to add. So if they put one, it'll set it to add. If they put two, it'll set it to subtract, and so on. So then it switches on that choice. And now we have a case where it says one, and while this will probably work since they are those values. The standard thing to do is, well, you're switching on this enum, so it's only going to look for these values in the switch statement. And some IDEs, an IDE being Visual Studio Code here, will auto will auto complete your cases if you put an enum in the switch and help you fill it out a little quicker. But what we can do now is make it just even more clear and put our actual enum values in here. And it's just, uh, yeah, it just makes it a little more clear. 
So you'll see enums a lot when there's state control in a program. And let's go ahead and compile and run this and make sure our, I didn't program in any handy dandy errors. Oops. And it appears I did. It doesn't like this CN of the choice. So what we would probably have to do here is figure out a little fancy way to get around it. So we still have to find a slightly different way of doing this. So what is a better way to do this? Turns out that this is probably a bad example of enums because CNing the value of it to a console under the value is not really too conducive to setting these. You usually want to set these by some other state in your program, by some other case. So it would just end up being a lot of code if I if I did that because I would basically need some other kind of statement to set that up. So if we go back to our old version of it and then we say after the fact, well I guess we could do one sort of fancy thing here and put a little while choice is invalid. So this actually does bring up a way for us to loop in our CN and make sure we get a valid entry because at the end of this we could say if choice is greater than zero and choice is less than five. Now this is a very weird way of writing this but it does accomplish one goal of making sure we're giving our program valid input because it's only going to accept greater than zero which is going to be one and up and less than five which is going to be four and down so it'll clamp it between one and four and then we'll say we'll set our choice and here we can set it directly to that integer and we might have to do some sort of static cast we'll see if it likes this or not. So it's not going to change from invalid unless we have a valid choice number. But we could say something like and just let the user know. Uh, maybe we'll put an escape is to make a literal of that single quote right there. Okay, and let's see how this does. Now it doesn't seem to like the conversion from integer to choice. And I believe what we have to do here is a static cast. And now it's happy because it's going to convert whatever this is to this new enum type because this is not while it's set to some type of integer it's not actually an integer so we have to cast it using static cast you can look up more about static cast online if you're confused about it but it's very similar to the old casting style I showed you before where you could do something like if we want to change these to a float Um, you used to, in the, before C++, you used to cast with just parentheses in front of your variable name. So that would cast this double to a float. But the newer way of doing that is with static cast and then the type you want to cast it to here and then the type you're casting there. So I guess we'll be covering a tiny bit of that here too. So it would be more like this to do it the new C++ way. And I think that is just to help handle some more error cases. Okay, so now this should work. Let's go ahead and compile one last time and we'll run it. And let's plus three for multiply. Seems to be going to the right place. We got our calculation. Let's do another. Let's try an invalid entry of nine and it tell us invalid, tells us invalid entry of 9. Try again. 
So now we've sort of abstracted our choice out into a, to an enum and the switch. And I, <laughs> this might be a bit of a confusing episode, but it's really important to understand how these enums work, and I think I've covered the majority of it. Also, you can start them negative if you want, but uh, if we change that to negative one, this first one will be zero, and that throws off our entire logic right there. So it's rather important, based on the way we've created this, for this one to start at zero. You can use enums anywhere you want in your code to help make your switch cases cleaner, and anywhere else you might have some state-based logic. They can really come in handy. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep on coding.